you know, give Ohio credit, man. That was a straight ass kicking. Um, I told our guys, man, we got to be able to handle adversity. It's the same thing. It's like a broken record from last game. And the crazy thing was, I mean, it happened in the first half. We're up by 10. I had to call two timeouts during that segment. Um, didn't like the look on our faces. You could just tell, man, we were our, our minds were elsewhere. Um, weren't weren't into the moment. And that's on me. I, I, we got to be able to fight through some adversity. Got to be able to figure it out. You know, I told our guys afterwards, you know, we got one of two directions we can go. It's very simple. We're at a fork in the road. You know, we can either um, feel sorry for ourselves and, 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 and fracture, or we can come together and figure it out, lean into it. And if we do that, we've shown we can beat anybody in the MAC. We've also shown we can lose to anybody in the MAC at the same time. It, it's all about our mindset. You know, we're our biggest, our biggest competition is ourselves. But you can't win when you have 18 turnovers. You give up 17 offensive rebounds. I mean, they had 18 points off their off the second chance. A lot of those were early. I thought our our first shot defense in the first half was terrific. But they had I think nine points at half off offensive rebounds, and then they scored 25 points off their turns. I mean, it's. The game's pretty dang simple. So, uh, but give them credit. They played well and they're playing really good basketball right now. Uh, it seemed like a couple times, uh, for example, late in the first half and uh, a little bit there again in the second half, uh, there'd be a little flurry of turnovers. Oh. And that would kind of light the fuse, if you yeah. will. And, the, you know, and the, and all of a sudden, if you add that and they start hitting a couple of shots, that's where they, you know, the, the, the margin changes in a, in a hurry. But they seem like live ball turnovers. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell me about it. I saw it. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't call it flurry. I call that an avalanche. Um, I mean, like, dude, it, we got to be strong with the ball. I mean, I just, our decision making was casual, one handed catches, casual passes without looking. I mean, just, be stronger with the ball. Be a, be a, be a be a Division One basketball player. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. You have 18 turnovers. You ain't winning any games. And they scored obviously 25 off of our turnovers, uh, which killed us. Coach, I know you've talked about adversity a fair amount both Tuesday and today. Just based off the structure of this team you know, down double digits in the second half. Where do you envision, ideally, that punch back coming from? Oh, man. Um, I don't know, and that's not a good answer. But I don't know. And I, you know, we're, we're searching for, you know, we've been searching for player leadership. You know, I think it's like, you know, like some guys that will lean into that. Because like, otherwise you're just a bunch of front runners. And we're not front runners here at Miami. Can't be. Can't be consistent if that's what you're going to be. Right? And, you know, so when somebody throws a punch, man, you got to throw it back. Um, well, we got so many timeouts, used all of them pretty early. Um, but we, we got to – again, it was, it was – the crazy thing was it, it was happening when we were still up. <laughs> That's what I was like. I was like, fellas, you act like we're down by 30 right now. We're up by seven. So you got to get your head in the game. You got to focus. You got to go next play mentality, right? But you got to be strong with the ball. We got to block them out. All right, we do those two things. Guess what? We'd be up by about 15. But, you know, again, like give Ohio credit. I mean, they, they played really hard. They created turnovers, and they were on the glass. And it wasn't one guy that was on the glass either. It was all their guards, too. Shelton had one. Hunter had one at that point. You start looking at their guards. Their guards were getting offensive rebounds. And guys just looking around like blank stares. It's like, listen, do your job. When you face adversity, you got to get tighter. You got to execute just that much more. Right? That's, that's what you got to do. That's what the good ones do. And, and the good teams, the really good teams, can fix things live. And it doesn't take a day to show film, have a kumbaya. No, they, they fix that thing live. And, but, again, like, I think we got to continue, obviously, to develop that player leadership on our team. I do think we have a couple guys that can do it. Deviating a little bit, I know you're wearing the turtlenecks. It's Coach Cole's tribute night. His wife is here. Can you just talk a little bit about, you know, you coached in this area, what he's meant yeah. to this program and this community? Yeah, you know, it was uh, great having the family back in here today, Coach Coles' family, uh, specifically Dolores. Um, I think this is the first time she had watched a game, you know, since, uh, since Coach Coles. Um, you know, Coach Coles just being there at Xavier for all the years. And, I mean, I tried to get him to hire me back in the day. Um, I never forget, I sent him a shoe. I was young. I was inexperienced. And uh, 
I sent him a, sh- a tennis shoe and I wrote a note in there. Hey, listen, I'm just trying to find a way to get my foot in the door. Just trying to just, just trying to figure out a way. He was kind enough. Listen, I was 22 years old. And he said, Travis, hey, listen, love what you what you sent me. He said, very creative. And uh, I said, but, yeah, there's a but coming. He said, you're a little inexperienced for, for the job right now. And, uh, but just had the utmost respect for him, how he ran the program. Um, his personality is bigger than life. Um, you know, he just, he, he put his heart and soul into this program. And, you know, we want to get it back to the point when he was here. Coach Hedricks, obviously, still walking the halls here in Millet um, when those guys were here, you know, and because this place means a lot to the, to the former coaches and the former players, and, and um, we're doing it for them. You know, but it was great to be able to honor Coach Coles here tonight. And he would have been disappointed with the result. You know, I, I do know that. Man, you, we, his team's always played with that toughness and that edge. Always. Maybe struggled to score at times. But I will tell you, man, they really guarded. And they were tough. And we got to get to that point. You know, we got to get that. Got six days now until next game coming up on Thursday. Yep. What do those next six days look like for your group to get them to be that aggressor coming up in the first round? Yeah, I think, you know, number one, obviously we'll take a day off for NCAA rules tomorrow. Um, Sunday we'll be back on. We need to watch this. We need to see it. We need to own it. And then we need to learn from it and flush it and then move forward, right? And um, we'll probably get our guys up and down heavy as well that day just to get their, keep their win, keep them in shape. Monday we'll be off as well. And then we'll practice Tuesday and Wednesday uh, leading up to uh, Cleveland. And you know, because because you got three games in three days, obviously you got to win the first one. That's all that matters right now. It's on. That's all. That's on our on my mind. Um, but you know, we want to get our guys. Listen, it's <sighs> basketball is a crazy sport, and I, I, you know, one one of the best teams that I was able to be a part of at Xavier, I think was back in the year. I think it was sixteen seventeen. I get all these years blend together, but um, we lost probably six or seven games in a row towards the end of the Big East. I mean, we were we were on the ropes, man. We were. You could tell everybody was killing us, saying we stink. Everybody, the month before, was saying how good we were, right? We were top 10 in the country, and, and um, we snuck into the NCAA tournament barely. I mean, limped in. I mean, just limped in. And then two weeks later, we're in the, in the Elite Eight playing Gonzaga, you know, 40 minutes away from being in a Final Four. And, you know, it, you got you to gotta learn. Like, again, we had, didn't have the performances we wanted this week. That's for darn sure. Um, but you got to move on. Can't feel sorry for us. I don't know who the heck we play. Quite honestly, I haven't, I haven't listened to any scores or anything like that. Um, but whoever we play, man, they better get the best version of Miami. The most together, the toughest. Uh, that, that, that needs to happen on Thursday, and that's got to be our mindset starting right now. Not, not just when practice is, is in session, but like right now, just complete focus on the task at hand. Coach, what do you think was the biggest difference between uh... – uh, first half and the second half. In the first half, Ohio shot 25% from the field. In the yep. second half, 56.2. Conversely, yep. uh, in Miami's case, 40% in the first half and 34%. So, I mean, on each of those ends, did, was there any particular things that you – or did they just catch fire? No, it's – it's it, you know, listen, they, we uh, – yeah, we shot horrible in the first half too. I mean, it's – 40 is not very good. That stinks. Um, but, um, you know, I thought, I thought again, those live ball turnovers kill us. I thought, you know, Hadaway hit a three early in the half, a couple threes early in the second half, gave them a lot of confidence. And, you, again, it, it's all about the adversity piece for us. I think if you look at our performance, and, again, this is, this is basketball. You play 40 minutes. You don't play 15. You don't play 12 minutes. All right, we're good for 12. Then they throw a punch. We didn't have a response the rest of the game. You know, you look at their percentages the rest of the game. From that moment on, I would say their percentages were really, really good, right? So, like, it's just our response, man. Like, again, you can't control maybe what just happened, but you can't control what you're going to do moving forward and how focused you can stay. I know it's got to be tough when you've got people like Clayton that are big guys that can come out there and yeah. shoot, shoot threes from anywhere – you know, on the on the perimeter, but you it seemed like you held him down a little bit, nine nine points. Yeah. But then they picked it up, you know, in other areas with, with other people. Yeah, and other I I thought we did a pretty good job on Clay. Clayton is, 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 in my opinion, the best shooter in the league, regardless of position. 
talking fives. They play him at the five, which makes him a matchup nightmare. <laughs> he's better at the five than he is the four. The four, he's he's much easier to guard. Five, he is, man, really hard to guard. Um, he puts you in a bind. And, you know, Jalen Hunter, I don't even know how much he had tonight. Like, I think Jalen Hunter is the best point guard in the league. He had seven assists. So people are going to say, oh, he didn't score it tonight. But he had seven assists, two turns. He controls the whole deal. He controls the whole deal. I mean, he just he, he's never out of control, never gets sped up. He makes all the right plays. I mean, he, he serves it on a platter to those guys. He does, man. I, I, he, he, is, he is a tremendous player. Um, he's got my vote for first team all conference. That's for darn sure. So what did you see as the primary difference between the first half and the second half? Um, I mean, I think we just, they kind of took us out of our offense that second half. We couldn't really run uh, the stuff we wanted to run because they're in ball pressure. And, um, that's something we got to, I guess, handle because it's happened the past couple games. But I'm confident we'll figure it out and uh, get the ball where we want to get the ball and uh, be better next game on the offensive end for sure. Uh, they've got some tough matchups out there, and I know you had, you know, at times uh, had some people that are, uh, you know, have some good shots and everything. Mm -hmm. How did you feel having to uh, defend a couple of these guys? This is your second time around with them. I don't know if it gets harder or easier or what. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit of both because – this late in the conference play, I guess, everyone only kind of does what they're good at. They're not going to be kind of out, out of character, I guess. So we kind of know what their main tendencies are. So that's kind of what we do in scout team. We just kind of try to take away their first and second option and make them get to their third option. Like if they're good at shooting, we want them to really drive the ball with their uh, offhand and try to make plays if they're a straight shooter. So, I mean, it's just uh, get watch the scout team and stuff like that. Coach Steele's talked a lot about leadership what do you feel like with you and some of the older guys over the next week or so got to do to just kind of flush things out and be ready yeah. for the tournament yeah um I mean we got me Andy and Darwishi it was our senior night or whatever so I think we just got to kind of step up and in times of adversity whenever I guess they were throwing punches um people got to look to us for leadership and we got to be we got to be better as well kind of being better role models in our own aspect and using our voices as well I think uh, when the game gets kind of like, I guess, when they're throwing their punches, everyone's getting kind of timid and they're looking for somebody to step up. So we just got to, I guess, come together as a team and use our strength in numbers.